Time now for Focus. In this edition, we return to the Central African Republic, the impoverished nation that hit headlines three years ago amid brutal intercommunal violence. The conflict pitted mostly Muslim Seleka rebels against mainly Christian anti-Balaka militia. One of its enduring images was the makeshift refugee camp that sprung up around the airport in the capital, Bongi. Well, instability continues in the wake of a peace deal, but now the government set to clear the site, saying it poses a threat to airline safety. For residents, that means a return back to neighbourhoods where some of them fear for their safety and uh, would have little money in their pockets. A common scene on the landing strip of Bangui Airport. Airplanes come in to land just metres away from a crowd of hundreds of Central Africans that cross the track every day. These displaced people have taken refuge in the grounds of the Shabi Aerodrome for three years, seeking safety and protection near UN peacekeepers. A makeshift camp surrounded by abandoned aircrafts in a desolate lunar landscape. In the last few days, the approximately 28,000 people recorded here have been asked to leave the area and their shelters due to be demolished soon and to return home. There were huts all the way to the end. Where you can see the tin roofs, there were huts there too. Virginie Mbaikoua, Central African Republic Social Affairs Minister, is behind the decision to relocate displaced persons from the airport camp. She's touring the site to evaluate the progress of the expulsion, which she initiated as much for safety as sanitary reasons. Have you seen? This is a lodging. So, people have lived here for three years. Their health has gotten worse as well. So, today they're aware that their life is in the neighbourhoods. To encourage people to go back to their neighbourhoods of Bangui, a census was carried out to help finance their return. A modest sum is offered to families of displaced persons who have agreed to leave the airport to help them get back on their feet. For a family of three people, we give them 50,000 CFA francs. A family of four, five, six people or more are given 100,000 francs. Between 75 and 150 euros per family, an inadequate amount for Albert, 52 years old and forced to leave this area of the airport. For three years, he resisted the temptation to return to his neighborhood. Now, resigned, he reluctantly takes down his shelter, still tormented by the fear of going home. We know that when we're here, we're safe, more so than if we'd stayed in our neighborhoods. Some people stayed in the neighborhoods and they were killed. The journey home by horse cart with his eight children is just a few kilometers from the airport. On the edge of KP5, an area populated mostly by Muslims, this is what remains of Albert's neighborhood. My neighborhood is somewhere here. We'll go in, you'll see. Today, the Christian neighborhood is in ruins, an aftermath of the war. It was destroyed by the Selika. The Selika, the predominantly Muslim rebellion, fought the armed anti balaka militia made up of Christians and animists three years ago. An outbreak of violence still alive in Alain's memory, who recently relocated close to his home, targeted after his escape. This is my house. The other one over there is also my house. The Muslims came thinking we were still inside. They started to shoot. You can still see the bullet holes here. Back in his neighborhood to rebuild his house and resume the course of his life, it's not without a hint of apprehension from fear of seeing the violent conflict revived. I pray the government will put security measures in place. Because here we're defenseless. Without any protection. So there has to be an outpost so that we'll be safe. Without one, we'll always be afraid to stay in the neighborhood. Because at any given time, those people, the street thieves, could return to get their revenge. That's really my main concern with the government. 
In the airport zone, thousands of people are still waiting to go home, but they're only one third of the 100,000 displaced people that were present here at the peak of the crisis. In a camp that's become an indicator of the fragile return to peace in the volatile Central African Republic. For more on this, I'm joined by Médecins Sans Frontières Operation uh, Coordinator Renzo Frica in uh, Brussels. Thanks very much uh, for talking to us. As we saw the situation uh, there in Bangui and elsewhere in Central African Republic, shaky. Yes, it, it is, of course, very much uh, shaky, though in Bangui, uh, the security situation has improved a bit since uh, a few years ago and definitely since uh, December 13 and January 14. So indeed, now after three years of uh, living as uh, displaced in uh, in Poco camp, uh, the majority of the uh, people are kind of happy to go back where they come from, the neighborhood where they come from, um, and mostly because security situation has improved uh, in those areas. Security may have improved in the capital, but as we saw uh, in that report, one of the big problems is that people simply don't have houses to go back to uh, on some occasions. What's the state of the infrastructure like, not just housing, but I'm thinking more your area of expertise, healthcare, hospitals, etc. Yes, indeed. As, as you said, most people going back in the neighborhood lost their houses. In terms of um, basic services, and especially health services indeed, uh, it's important to know that uh, two-thirds of the patients that we were uh, seeing in our hospital in Poco uh, camp were actually coming from outside of the camp, which shows a bit how much uh, the health provision uh, was is inadequate in, in Bangui and, and not enough uh, compared to the needs. And of course, uh, Bangui is in a way uh, better than anywhere else in the country. So whether it's in the east, the north, in the west, um, the health provision is really inadequate. And there are many, many barriers for the patients to access uh, those health care, whether it's uh, insecurity, whether it's financial barriers, just distance, um, yes, many challenges. Describe the situation outside the capital. As you said, it's a sparsely populated country. There are many very remote areas, and in, in some of those areas, the violence continues. Yes, indeed. Uh, the, the, the violence, I mean, I, I mean, it's, there's a good news in Bangui with the closure of the camp, but this is a bit the, 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 the tree hiding the forest behind, in a way, because uh, there are many areas in the country where uh, violence is, uh, is quite, uh, quite high. Today it's in the Waka province mostly, where ex-Silica uh, factions together with Antibalaka are fighting each other. And of course, uh, this violence prevents people, uh, civilians are directly affected by this conflict and indirectly and, and prevent them to access uh, healthcare and prevents, of course, the government to deploy health services uh, in, the, in, in the country. So in a, in a province like uh, Bangesu province, there is barely one or two doctors for, for uh, 200,000 people. So of course, without uh, health actors or uh, non-governmental organizations like Médecins Sans Frontières, there would be almost no uh, health provision provided to, to the population. Tell us a little bit more about uh, what uh, MSF is doing and, and what, you, what you hope to be able to do. So in, in uh, Central African Republic, Médecins Sans Frontières has uh, 17 projects. So it's a very massive uh, uh, deployment we have with um, more than 50, 000, uh, 50 million euros, sorry, uh, for only 5 million uh, people. So it's more than 10 euros per, per person for uh, at uh, national level. Um, so which is a very massive and very uh, exceptional deployment for, for MSF. Um, and the, 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 the projects we have are quite, uh, quite uh, wide. It goes from surgical projects to pediatric uh, maternities, uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, and of course a very import, uh, important uh, uh, emergency preparedness component. Uh, we are ready to uh, deploy and start new activities, whether it's for uh, uh, displacement of population because of the conflict or because of an outbreak of uh, a disease. So we are already in the verge to uh, intervene uh, in one location or another. Very quickly, how many of the conditions that led to the, the latest uh, outbreak of violence in, in CAR a few years ago, how many of those conditions remain in place? Well, none of the, uh, none of the, the root causes that created the conflicts has been, uh, has been uh, solved. So, uh, 
of course, there's been a lot of simplification around the conflict, and uh, it's sometimes depicted as a Christian versus a Muslim conflict, but it's not at all. Uh, it's much more complex political, economic, community, uh, 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 and with, through a long history of the, of, of, the, of the country. So today, none of the solutions have been really, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, uh, no solutions have been found, no political, no clear political solution has been identified. Yes, there's been a, a democratic election uh, earlier, uh, or last year, February last year, but, but again, today the country is still divided and ex uh, Seleka uh, factions uh, are still today uh, holding part of the northern part of the country. So the government of Central African Republic is not able to deploy uh, its uh, governance uh, throughout the country. Renzo Frick and Brussels, thanks very much for joining us.